My name is Fia and I have been living in Berlin since July last year where I moved from my hometown of Melbourne in Australia and I've been playing music in Europe ever since then. It's been really fun. I have a solo show where I use um, a kalimba and a loop pedal and it's um, been really fun. Um, jumping on the train and getting in cars, going around to different European cities just with my little setup and yeah. You know, the city is full of artists and full of creative people and it seemed like it would be a very inspiring place to live. Um, coupled with that, um, there's quite a, it's quite cheap, <laughs> which is why there's so many artists here, which of course means it's really a great place to be making music. Um, and I also have, um, a family connection here. My grandfather was born in Berlin, so I have a riser pass. <laughs> so um, that was also a sort of, of course that means, you know, traveling around Europe is quite easy, but there was definitely a sense of, um, there's a nostalgic connection, yeah, with the city. So, and it's great, I don't want to leave. <laughs> I've probably got my mother to thank for, for the very beginning because she put me into piano lessons when I was five years old, which I loved and I played piano for a really long time. Um, but in terms of the music that I'm making now, um, I it was sort of like this gradual thing, like I actually studied um, jazz piano at university, That's, I did a degree, and um, I started writing pop songs at the same time and I was sort of living this dual life for a little while where I was really wanting to sing and, and play my music but I was also going to like jazz gigs at night. And then um, actually it happened, I, I saw someone playing the kalimba in another band and I bought it because I decided to buy one because I thought, well that's so nice, I'll have one at home, it's a nice sort of addition and then once I got a hold of it, I just, just fell in love with it and didn't really want to play piano anymore. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I started writing a heap of songs on it and then I knew that I was coming to Europe in, you know, this was about a year and a half ago. So having, and the fact that I could put the instrument that I was playing just in my backpack or in my handbag was a real like, it sort of was very liberating, so I think it sort of helped the push, even though it was that I loved the sound of the instrument. So, yeah. I definitely write pop songs, like I really love um, uh, a good hook in the chorus and clever verses, that's what I love about a lot of music that I listen to. But the music is, um, um, I use a loop pedal to, to loop the kalimba and my voice. So I guess it's a little bit experimental as well. So sometimes I call it experimental pop or art pop. Um, at the moment that seems the best way to describe it. I mean, the kalimba is a sort of world music um, sound. So it's that really nice resonating. So it's really nice seeing sort of pop music over the top of these sort of like enchanting world music sounds. So yeah. I sometimes I think it's songwriting is a like a, a cheaper form of therapy because you can um try and process things that you're going through that are difficult. Um, um yeah, so I mean I try not to make it too sort of dear diary. <laughs> um, um, but, it, but it's often about things that I notice and observe in the world around me or, or reactions to things and um, yeah, I guess, I mean it's sort of hard, I don't, don't often think about what, is, there's general themes and stuff. Some people have noticed I write a lot of love songs which I didn't notice myself but now when I think about it I can see that but I think that's because um, you know, love is such a, it's a cliche, but it's really quite life-changing when you, when you 
go through it. So, of course, that sort of found its way into my music. So, yeah, so it is, it is quite personal. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I think music fulfills a lot of desires that I have. Um, I really like performing. I've always really liked that ever since I was young when you put on shows for your parents and <laughs> you know going into school and being part of theatre performances and I really like I think there's something really really nice about connecting with people in a on a stage or you know with an audience and music allows me to do that um, I yeah I also really love I mean just creating is really being creative is such um, a beautiful process and I feel really lucky that I'm allowed to dedicate a lot of my week to creating like my life at the moment and music is so it's sort of like a, a a tool that allows me to create as quickly and as easily and as enjoyably as possible probably the Spice Girls first album probably in grade six I think um, I loved the Spice Girls. They were, I sort of moved from the Beatles to the Spice Girls, which sounds a bit weird. But um, I I look back now and I think that they were actually a really great introduction to contemporary music because they had a lot of fun and they wore um, they had a lot of fun with their outfits and their music and there was a really nice girl power vibe. And um, I look back at their songs and I actually think, you know, they, I think they wrote with the songwriting team and they were, they were pretty fun pop songs. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not, not ashamed of the fact. <laughs> I haven't started learning German yet, but I'm going to be starting to learn when I get back from Poland, which is where I'm touring soon. But I love all this, the tiny little sayings that I can start to hear around the place, like, um, Alice Clark, I really like that. <laughs> People use that all the time. It's such a nice, simple saying. Um, maybe that's maybe that's my favourite saying. The end of the day, I'd accomplished great things. The smell of wood shavings, the feel of grain under my fingertips. It stay with me inside my head and in my dreams while I slept. Days writing the sums and thinking about why an X.